Have you ever complained? I know I have. Like maybe you wanted to wear your favorite shirt today, but mom forgot to wash it, so you complain. Maybe you get to have pizza for dinner, but there's also some broccoli to eat, so you complain. It's easy to complain when we don't get what we want and we don't get it how we want it. In our story of Moses and the Israelites, we have seen how God has taken care of his people and everything they need. He's provided for them, he's rescued them from slavery, he's protected them from their enemies, and even from the hot sun. God provided everything they didn't even know they needed. Today, we're gonna hear about how the Israelites complain. Wow, we have seen some pretty incredible things God has done in the history book of the universe, the Bible. Last time, we saw Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt, and God parted the deep waters of the Red Sea so his people could walk through on dry ground. Amazing! But that is not where the story of the Israelites ends. After everything God had done for them to rescue them from slavery— and bring them into a land that would belong to them, they managed to doubt God, complain to God, and not believe God. Does that ever happen to you? Do you sometimes wonder if God, what God says in the Bible is true? Do you wonder if God is not giving you what's best for you? Do you complain? Sometimes we all struggle to believe God. The good news is he can handle our unbelief and he helps us with it. Today we will see how God helped his people with their struggles and unbelief and he never ever stopped loving them. Once the Israelites were on the other side of the Red Sea, they began walking and walking. And for three days they walked. While they had been walking, they were singing and praising God for the miraculous way he had rescued them from Egypt. After three days, the Israelites realized they had no water. They were in the desert without water, all two million of them. They stopped at a place called Elam, And there they began to complain. They whined and sobbed to Moses because the only water around was not drinkable. It was bitter. It was yucky. So Moses cried out to God. And God answered Moses. And he gave him some kind of weird instructions. But at this point, after all those plagues in Egypt, I'm pretty sure Moses didn't find God's methods strange at all. God told Moses to throw some wood into the yucky water. Moses obeyed God, and suddenly the water was good and refreshing, and the Israelites could drink it. God also told the Israelites that if they would listen to him and trust him and obey him, he would take care of them and would heal them from all their sicknesses. Let's pause there for a moment. God had done a lot of amazing things with nature to save his people from slavery in Egypt. What do we learn about God by thinking about what he can do with nature? Well, with the Israelites, they saw God as powerful. He turned water to blood. He caused frogs and flies and gnats to swarm. He allowed animals to get sick and he moved huge amounts of water apart so they could walk through safely to the other side. And now, God turned the yucky, undrinkable water into a refreshing rest, and he replenished his people. For us, God sends rain that waters all the flowers and plants and keeps everything beautiful. 
God makes sure the animals, like birds, always have food. God keeps all the laws of nature and the cycles of nature in order. So even though a plant may die, when the right season comes, it grows again. God provides so much proof of who he is just in nature. He is powerful. He is smart. He is orderly. He is very creative. I mean, just look at all the colors right outside your window. These things that we see every day, they had to get there somehow. Who put them there? Who makes them grow? Who keeps the earth spinning around the sun? God does all of that. The Bible tells us that that is one way that God reveals that He exists to us. Through nature. God certainly proved He existed and is powerful to the Israelites, didn't He? A couple of months later, God brought his people to a safe place for them to camp. This whole journey they had been walking whenever God told them to move, and he moved in the cloud by day and the fire by night. They had camped whenever God stopped the cloud or the fire. While they were camping and enjoying some rest on their journey, they began to complain. Yep, after everything God had done, they were complaining again. There were, they were so whiny to Moses and to Aaron, Moses' brother, that they even said they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted better food to eat. They wanted what they liked. They wanted what they were used to in Egypt, where food was more plentiful. So Moses asked God what to do. God answered Moses, and he said that he would provide his people with food straight from heaven. Can you imagine? Every morning there were bits of bread-like sweet food on the ground. Every morning the Israelites would gather just what they needed for the day. Those were God's instructions. You see, he wanted them to rely on him every day for what they needed and not to rely on themselves. God also gave them meat to eat. In the evening the camp was filled with quail. The Israelites had so much quail meat, they actually began to get sick of it. After a little while, God told them to move, and they started walking again. Once again, they began to get thirsty on their journey, and there was no water. Guess what they did? Yep, you guessed it. They complained again. Moses went to God, and again God gave him some strange instructions. He told Moses to strike a large rock. Moses obeyed God, and water poured out of the rock. Can you imagine that? Enough water poured out that it made a pool, and all the people and all their livestock were able to drink their fill. Even though they kept complaining, God kept meeting each and every need they had. Here's a picture of where archaeologists think the water split the rock and poured down for the Israelites to drink. Pretty amazing, right? Remember, God's earth will always support what God says in his word, the Bible. Eventually, God led his people to camp at a place called Mount Sinai. God had a special plan for Moses, the leader God had picked for his people. You see, the people had been born into slavery. They were never free until now. They didn't know how to be a nation of people that belongs to God. God needed to help them become a people and work together. God needed to teach them what he wanted them to do and not to do and how to worship him. They had a lot to learn. While they were camped, Moses climbed the mountain and visited with God face to face. Can you imagine how cool it would be to sit and talk face to face with God? Well, while they were talking, God wrote onto some rocks with his finger some of the rules he wanted the Israelites to follow that would help them learn to live together and to worship God, and the rules would help them know when they were sinning. I bet you know what rules I'm talking about. That's right, the Ten Commandments. The only problem was, 
Moses had been up on the mountain with God for so long, the people didn't believe he would return. They didn't believe God would continue to lead them and help them. What do you think they did? You guessed it. They complained. This time, they complained to Moses' brother Aaron. They begged Aaron to melt their gold jewelry and gold items to make an idol for them to worship. They intimidated Aaron so much, he did what they asked. The people began to worship the idol in the shape of a cow. Remember what God had done to the cows in Egypt? They all got sick and died. But the Israelites decided they wanted to trust in a statue of an animal that God clearly showed he had power over, instead of trusting in God. Moses was so upset when he came down from the mountain at what he saw that he threw down the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments and they broke. He then knocked down the idol and he melted it in the fire and destroyed it entirely. He prayed for God to spare the people and have mercy on them. Because of God's great love, God did have mercy on the people. They were sorry for their sin and asked God to forgive them. Then Moses had to go back up the mountain and get new tablets of God's Ten Commandments. Leading God's people was a big and tiring job. God is patient. He listened to his people complain and not trust him and not believe him, even though he had done so many amazing things to give them everything they needed. Why do you think God did that? It's because God loves his people. In fact, just like God loved the Israelites so much, God loves you and God loves me that much too. God hears when we complain. He knows when we don't trust him. He knows when we're struggling to believe in him. And yet, he still loves us. In fact, the Bible tells us exactly how we can know for sure that God loves us. It says that God chose to sacrifice his very own son, Jesus, to die for our sins so we can be God's people, his family. God sent his only son, Jesus, to be the perfect sacrifice for sin. God knows we need a perfect sacrifice for our sin because we are slaves to our sin. We're trapped in it. There's no way we can save ourselves, just like the Israelites were slaves stuck in Egypt. Jesus proved who he was by the miracles he performed and all the people he healed. And then he chose to allow the people to put him to death in the most horrible of ways. He allowed the Roman rulers to execute him on a cross because he understood that sin could only be paid for with his death. So Jesus died on the cross for your sin and for my sin and for the sin of the whole world. His sacrifice was enough to wipe out all that sin. It erased all our complaining, all our lack of trust, and all of our unbelief, too. He didn't, say, he didn't stay dead. Jesus is God. Nothing can keep him dead. Jesus came alive again, shattering any power that death had. That's a really great story, but how do we experience having the weight and penalty of our sins removed from us by Jesus' sacrifice? How do we trust God? How do we believe in him? Well, it's easier than you may think. First, you have to agree with God that you are a sinner. And if you've ever told a lie or yelled and screamed when you were angry, that's enough to make you a sinner. Even if you ever just thought a bad thought about someone. Sinner. We are all guilty and the Bible clearly explains that our sin leads to our eternal death. Not just the death of our bodies, but the death of our souls. But if we agree with God that we are sinners and that we need to be free from our slavery to sin, in other words, we need to be rescued, all we have to do is tell Him we agree with Him. We pray and tell God that we agree with Him that we're sinners and that we believe he sent his son Jesus to rescue us from our slavery to sin, 
just like he rescued the Israelites from Egypt. We ask Jesus to come into our lives and to be in charge. We invite him to be our leader and our protector. And that's it. That's all it takes for us to be rescued from our slavery to sin and our enemy, the devil. We can also ask Jesus to help us trust him and believe him. You know what? Those are prayers Jesus always answers. We are just like the Israelites. We may think it's crazy that they complained and didn't trust or believe God after all the amazing things he had done for them. But we're the same. It's easy to forget how amazing God is and how much he loves us when we're working on homework that we don't like. Or maybe we complain when we have to eat vegetables we don't want to eat. The good news is God forgives us when we complain or when we question his faithfulness to us, even when we don't trust him. Even when we struggle to believe he even exists. He forgives us and he helps us and he meets our needs just like he did with the Israelites after he rescued them from Egypt. Next time, we will see what happens with the Israelites as they get close to their new homeland and they meet some giants. Alrighty. So, as you all well know, it is my turn to make dinner. Um, do you do you have a, a preference of what you want today? Pizza. It's cheesy. There's carbs. I want pizza. Um, I'm not sure I have pizza. Uh, would you, how about an orange? That's no meal. That's a disgrace. How about a banana? That's no meal. Come on, son. Um. I need something rich in fiber and protein and delicious flavor. How about some pasta? <laughs> no. That is the worst thing you could possibly give me. I I can't believe that you did that. Hey, pasta is delicious. I'm a little confused on our relationship now. All right, how about something a little more sweet? This is some delicious apple crisp. Get that away from my face before I hit you. Just, With so uh, much force that a lamb would look at that and go, ow! Here, try some. Just, just, here comes the airplane. Good, right? Oh, good, oh, okay, okay. Not apple crisp, clearly that isn't gonna work for you. All right, okay, how about, I got, I got nothing. Licorice, eat some licorice. No. Okay, what do you want? I said I want pizza. This is from my top secret super stash I keep buried in the basement. Mm -hmm. Where anybody could find it? Pizza. What is this? It's pizza. I don't understand. It's pizza. Ew. What? <laughs> but. I want... have sauce on my finger. Ugh. But you wanted pizza. Oh, so when I rub it on your face, it's not good? Get that away from me! <laughs> <laughs>